Hey guys, I'm Vanessa from Blush Wedding Photography and today we're going to be talking about the best kinds of room for getting ready in and why. So if you have already booked your, you know, accommodation and getting ready rooms, don't worry if anything that I say is like, oh no, that's exactly what we've booked and it's not going to be suitable. I'll be providing some ideas and just some tips to make that space a little bit more photogenic. So firstly, I wanted to talk um, a little bit about maybe the worst case scenario. There's two not so great scenarios. One being really, really dark, like an underground um, studio room only with only artificial light. And you might be thinking like, oh, well, it, you know, why don't you just turn the lights on? Now the problem with artificial lighting is the skin tone and also the direction of the light. So it's coming from above, which creates kind of like a raccoony shadow under your eyes. Just not pretty. The other terrible, well, just not so great scenario is just dark walls. So really dark kind of everywhere. I've seen it in like wood cabins and things like that. And even some hotel rooms where they'll have like a feature wall and it'll be like bright red. And then you have to remember that, yeah, the color cast from that is going to show up on the skin and also onto the dress. Anything white or light, it's going to throw that color onto. So the best case scenario, let's talk about that. Best case scenario is big, tall ceilings, white walls, big windows, corner windows even if possible, just beautiful natural light. It doesn't matter if the light is shining directly in, there's usually there'll be shears or something like that. It's always the cleanest, most beautiful light and everybody always looks the, the best in it. The bigger the better really because everyone has room to move if you don't want a lot of mess in your photos. I mean, I'm not opposed to like real life mess. I kind of like the idea and I, I do sometimes, you know, show that in my photos where you just show a bit more about life. Like in 50 years when you look back at your photos, like all of the branding on the hairsprays and things is going to be different. I feel like life is mess, you know. I always find it interesting. I, I, I always like to capture those details, you know, the beers that you're drinking and the lipsticks and I think documenting that is just as interesting as getting those beautiful setup shots. Best case scenario, big room, white walls, minimal furniture, nice space. We have in the past done where we've, you know, maybe not had the best scenario for getting ready. It's been really dark. So we've moved outside to kind of do some of the, like the dress shot, um, you know, some of those things. So that's always an option as well. I also think you know, you've just bought a house or you've just built a house or you've just renovated your home. You have memories there. How often do you have a professional photographer come into your home and take take photos of, of your life. Like if you've, if you've got a lovely home and, and you're proud of it, get ready at home. At least one of you get ready at home. My partner and I, I think he will get ready here. He's you know, really nearly built this house. So I think it'll be awesome to have photos of him out the front of the house. So a few tips on making your space at home more photogenic for when your photographer arrives for the getting ready would be to use a space that's like probably your front room or something like that where um, there are windows. Remove like kids toys, unless, unless you want them in your photos. And I'm really, really serious about that because like I was saying before, life is life. And I think, you know, it is nice to remember things as they are. But if you do want that clean look, remove all the t toys, even things that are just like a bit random. So if you're a kind of person that has like a bookshelf and you've got heaps and heaps of knickknacks and things on it, maybe just clear it off and put just like a plant there. It's just decluttering and minimizing the stuff in the room. So when you look at the photo, you're really just looking at the people in it and everything else is just complimentary. Remove crazy weird like art. Another thing is like if you're in a bedroom, White linens are always great. I sometimes bring like a white sheet if, if it's needed just to place, you know, on the bed. I always bring like hooks and things. So if there isn't anywhere to put the dress, we put it on the wall. But when the photographer comes in, they'll always use the space near the window. So if all of your bridesmaids have put all their stuff by the window, sometimes in small hotel rooms, for example, like there's not a lot of space, maybe just consider that everybody's stuff is as far away from the window as possible because that's generally where we would set you up to do your, 
you know, put the dress on and have like portraits and things. So you yeah, really don't want all that sort of stuff. And if your photographer or a photographer's assistant has to move everything out of the way, that's just time out of your photos. It's totally up to you guys. It's your wedding. 100% you do not have to listen to what I'm saying. They're just advice or tips that can help or maybe create slightly better photos than what may have been. So usually you would have worked out with your photographer on your run sheet the schedule, but sometimes it's a good thing to let the photographers know what time your makeup artists and hairstylists are arriving and also the exact time that your limo or driver or you're leaving. If you want the shots in, in robes, then the best thing to do would, is to stay in your robes, all your hair and makeup done, and then the photographer comes in and does those, you know, cute shots of you all doing champagne or like a little bit of makeup stuff, um, just helping each other, getting ready, that kind of thing. Usually the bridesmaids are the first to put their dresses on, so then they can help the bride with her dress and everybody still like ready. The bride should be the last person to get her dress on. A good thing as well for your getting ready is if you do have paper invitations to make sure you have a nice clean copy of one there. It's I, I always like to, if I can, do like a flat lay of the invitations, with the rings and some flowers and that kind of thing. Um, if you have any questions or if I've just totally missed something that's so important, please comment below. If you are newly engaged, please hit subscribe. You'll get an email when new videos come out and I'm gonna be doing videos every week with awesome suppliers, different celebrants and bringing all kinds of awesome stuff into your life. I know this is really a part of your life that you're maybe just stepping into and you're like, wow, I like literally know nothing about weddings and photography. So if you wanna learn more, Join me weekly. Thanks so much guys. Happy planning.